Hello, and welcome to today's evaluations training. Thank you so much for your time, and we do ask three things from our audience. If you have a question or comment that isn't answered in today's training, feel free to make a MyPers ticket, and your ticket will be answered in three to five business days. Once again, once you enter your MyPers ticket, it'll be answered in three to five business days. Lastly, we ask our audience to stay up to date in their Air Force AFIs. For this training, AFI 36-2406 will be our reference. Thank you, and let's get started. All right. Now, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and start off with the Air Force 77 formal LOE. Now, the formal LOE is normally used for uh, deployed commanders on G-Series orders or any officers who has a change in radar, but the supervision date is less than 100, 120 calendar days, which a uh, former LOE will have to be completed because they can't do a CRO because the SCRO um, has to be 120 days supervision. Now starting off with section one, block one, here you will input the rate's name, Block two will be their social, block three will be their rank, block four will be their duty FSC, five will be their duty title or duty title of additional duty. And then block six will be their deployed location or name of operation if applicable. All right. Moving on to section two of block A, the type of report will be a letter evaluation. Block B1 will be the period of report that this commander has been deployed for, and these are going to be the exact days that the commander is deployed for. For this specific scenario, we are going to be using 12 March 2018 through 17 October 2018. Now for block B2, the type of report is going to be considered mandatory. Block B3, the level of deployed commander duties performed for this specific, specific scenario is going to be a squadron commander. You do have an option of group commander and the wing commander. Block four will be the number of days in um, that commander was in the position for. This total amount of days will be calculated from the period of report that they were deployed for. So this is basically the total number of days they were deployed for, judging off from the period of report uh, provided. Moving on to block B5. The, this is where you input the G series orders number. And then the date of, of the order will always be the from date from when the commander started this deployment. So these two will be matching. The block one B1 from date will be matching the block B5 date of order. Moving on to section three, the deployed commander assessment. Uh, this will uh, this is basically the officer satisfactory completed their deployed command tour. It's going to be either yes or no. If it's going to be a no, then this this report is considered a referral report. In section four, in accordance with AFI 36-2406, paragraph 5.2.1.1. Again, this is for deployed commanders on G-series orders. The minimum amount of days required is going to be 45 days through the maximum amount, which is going to be 364 days. If the commander is deployed longer than 365 days, an OPR will be will have to be accomplished. Other than that, you will fill out a formal LOE. Again, um, in accordance with AFI 36-2406, paragraph 5.2.1.5, uh, for officers only, if there is less than 100 calendar days, 120 calendar days of supervision, an LOE is required. Please note, you can uh, see this in table 5.1 for guidance on how to accurately complete a formal LOE. Moving on to 
section five. This is where you input the Raiders identification data. So since this is a squadron command, the group commander will be uh, the squadron commander's Raider. You input their information here and they will sign a date. Section six, this is this is where you insert comments if every full or to document non-concurrence in accordance with table 5.1. Referral LOEs must contain the applicable mandatory statement in accordance with paragraph 1.10.5.3.2.2. And to fill out, if this is considered a referral LOE, you will fill out the second page as if you were doing a referral OPR because the second page on a referral OPR is the, the exact same process as you would do on this formal LOE. And we will go more in depth on, on how to process a referral LOE next month. That, that will be next month's training, but right now I'm just going through it quickly for, for now. Going back to the first page, um, continuing off section six, this is where you input the wing command use information and sign and then the last but not least the uh, radies acknowledgement where they will sign a date here now that would conclude our former loe process without further ado i'm going to go ahead and go on to the air force 77 supplemental loe now the supplemental loe is basically um to provide extra bullets if you ran out of space on the original o, uh, evaluation. So this, you will fill this out if you want to provide additional bullets to, um, to the original evaluation, but you ran out of room. And then going, going to section one, we're gonna start off with the radius name, the social, the rank, the duty FSCs, and the uh, duty title or title of additional duty of the RT that can be found on the original evaluation. Block, block six is only for deployed location or name of operation, but since this member isn't deployed, it's not very applicable. Moving on to section two, block A, the type of report will be a supplemental sheet Block B1, will, you will provide the period of report found on the original evaluation that this supplemental is supplementing. So for this specific example, we're gonna be using 12 March, 2018 through 11 March, 2020. Block B2, this report is considered optional because um, it, it is optional to provide extra bullets. You don't have to, so that's why this is considered optional. Block B3, 4, 5, and Section 3 is only applied for deployed commanders. So we would leave this blank because it's not very applicable. Moving on to Section 4. Again, supplemental LREs are filed in the members' official records attached to the eval. They are supplementing in accordance with paragraph 5.2.3. This could be used for a referral evaluation in accordance with paragraph 1.10, or this could be used for an evaluator disagreement, such as, for example, if the uh, additional rater doesn't agree with how the overall rating the rater gave the RT, and since the additional rater only has those two lines to provide bullets, they can go ahead and fill out this supplemental LOE and provide extra bullets on why they agree, or they can or if they would like to add like positive bullets that wasn't mentioned. In accordance with paragraph 1.9. This can also be used for the mm -hmm. Air Force advisor, functional or acquisition examiner. Now for uh, for the original evaluation, they don't really have space to provide bullets, but if they feel the need that they wanted to add bullets for the RT, they can always fill out this supplemental LOE and provide bullets here in section four. And this can this specific guidance can be found in accordance with paragraph 1.6.8. Moving on to section five, 
Now, the only required signature we need is from the CSS or the MPF themselves. They can either sign in section four or section five. Again, section four, section five, the only required signature we need is from the CSS or the MPF. Now, when submitting this into VPC, please attach this as one continuous document with the original evaluation. So when uploading it, please have the evaluation first followed by the supplemental LOE. Please note, if you attach this supplemental LOE in the additional attachments when submitting, anything in the additional attachment will not be uploaded into the RADIES record. So please attach this as one continuous document with the original evaluation. That concludes the supplemental LOE. We're going to be moving on to the Air Force GAP report. Now, the Air Force 77 GAP report is used to document a member's break in service. Going straight into it, section one will be you will enter the radius name. Block two will be their social. Block three will be their rank. Block four will be their duty FSC. You can leave block five blank because they have separated from the service and not attached and wasn't assigned a duty title. So you can leave this blank and you can leave block six blank as well because it's not applicable. Section two, block A type of report. You, you would leave this blank. I've seen it where people submit as letter evaluation. That's fine. We will not kick it back for that. But we prefer it to be blank since this is a gap report. Block B1, you input the, the break in service time. So this, the from date should be the day af after they separated. And the through date should be the day before they rejoined the service. For this specific scenario, I'm using 12 February 2018 through 11 March 2018. The type of block B2, the report is, we're going to leave that blank. Block B3, 4, 5, and section 3, we're going to leave blank as well because that only applies for deployed commanders on G-series orders. Now, for section four, you must provide this mandatory comment. The, the mandatory comment is going to be in italics, no evaluation available for the period, and you input the dates provided found in block one, which is going to be 12 Feb 2018 through 11 March 2018. No evaluation required according to AFI 36-2406. For applicable mandatory comment, see, please see table 5.1, note 5. So this mandatory comment can be found in AFI 36-2406, table 5.1, note 5. Now, again, the GAP reports are used to document a member's break in service. Please note that Air Force 77 GAP will not be utilized to replace an EPR if the member was present for duty and assigned to the unit on the static closeout date. Again, any the only required signature we need is from the CSS or the MPS member, and they can sign in either section four here, or they can sign in section five. Again, that's the only required signature we need for this gap report. Everything else is blank. That concludes the gap report. And we're going to go ahead and go into the Air Force 77 lost or missing LOE. Now the Air Force 77 lost or missing LOE is utilized to substitute or any lost or missing evaluation. For example, if the members pass EPR or OPR file has been corrupted and unable to open. 
but it's closed out in mail PDS, you will then submit this letter evaluation to substitute that lost or missing report. Or if the evaluation straight up just magically disappeared from the members products or arms, you will submit this report as well. And we'll get more into the meat and potatoes of it later in section four. But we're going to start off with section one. Section one, block one, you input the radius name. Two will be their social. Block three will be their rank. Block four will be their duty FSC. And then block five will be their duty title or or title of additional duty that that um, that would document their duty title from that specific report you are replacing. And this can also be found in the memories mill PS if it's closed out. Block six will be left blank because, well, if it's applicable. Section two, block eight, type of report. This will be a supplemental sheet. Block B1, you will input the specific period of report you are uh, replacing the, the original e evaluation with. For this example, we, use, we, we are using April 1st, 2014 through 31 March, 2016. And block B2, this report will be considered mandatory. Block B3, 4, 5, and section 3 will be left blank because this is only con applicable for deployed commanders on G series orders. Now, for the mandatory comment that needs to be provided with this lost or missing report in section 4, please state that no evaluation available for the period that is provided up here. Make sure these two dates match with each other from block B1 to section four. And then four administrative reasons which were not the fault of the member. The system reflects an overall rating of, and then you input the overall rating found in the member, member's closed out mil PDS line. Or um, does not reflect an overall rating, whichever is applicable in accordance with Table 5.1, note 5K. Again, administrative LOEs are used to substitute lost and or missing evaluations in which all evaluation if all actions to locate the eval have failed in accordance with 5.2.4. And again, any the only required signature we need is from the CSS or the MPS member which they can sign in section four and or section five. And now I will be going over how to submit an L477 through VPC. Okay, okay. how to submit an L477 via VPC. First step, you're going to log on to the MyPruse then you click access the VPC dashboard. Then you will click on the action request tab. And then it will give you a list of options where, you, but you will specifically click on submit a letter evaluation. It was form 77. Then you upload the report and submit to ARPC. So we can push the report into the members record product slash arms. So I can open up for comments, questions, or concerns from the, our audience. Starting off with, I can't, I can't see your rank, but I see Stevenson Kenyatta. You have a question? Hey, sir. Yes, I do. Um, I noticed that you you're using the missing loss report. Um, I just want to clarify. We have a lot of folks that uh, are don't have it, complete evaluations. Are we able to use this per the guidance uh, beyond when the uh, evaluation hasn't been written uh, more than 18 months? Are we able to use this as for the missing ones? Sergeant Lawyer, uh, can you interject and kind of answer this specific question for me? How you doing, Matt Sergeant Stevenson? This is Sergeant Lawyer I work with, uh, Sergeant Thatch. 
Uh, can you repeat the question? You said that uh, after 18 months, can you use the lost or missing report? Yeah, so per the AFI, uh, it, it's recommended that we don't try to accomplish the EPRs. Remember that's that has uh, evaluation has been completed for. So we have quite a few folks that are looking through the records and supervisors, uh, commanders have all left. So the the ability to write the EPR now is is kind of almost impossible. So I was just wondering, are we able to use this missing loss gap report or or seventy seven? Yes, sir, you can. Uh, there's been plenty of cases where uh, people have changed bases or went to a new unit at the same basis, a lot of circumstances, but if you can't find it or people retire, like you just said, at that point, if you can't find it at, at all within the unit or anywhere else, PRDA, that's when you will uh, you'll get to this, this LOE and send it to us with those dates that that's missing copy so follow up to that then um it, so if it's an if there's a scenario or situation where we have a, a personnel that if you generate this per for each one that they're due it's going to total to maybe like four or five of them are we able to use one of the standard um remarks mandatory remarks to just include do an inclusive of all those or do we have to use an individual uh, it'll be in since the person was it since it wasn't a break in service it had to be individual because we have to use those dates that was for that specific epr or opr for example the one that's on the screen the one april 14 31 march 16 let's just assume that's the senior airman scott and let's say you can't find that epr for that member you will use those dates for that epr and then if you can't find the other one let's say uh one april 16 to 31 March 18, there will be another separate one. If that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. I appreciate that. I just want to clarify. That's what we've been doing. I just want to clarify. Maybe some folks on the line may have that question as well, too. Oh, yeah, I appreciate the question. All right, next question. We uh, Staff Sergeant. Hi, sir. Um, I just wanted to clarify that um, the end date is for what is exactly should we put as the end date? It it varies from specific scenarios. Um, it could be either the SCOD or okay. if it's a OPR, it will be the annual date that the OPR cycle is. OK, no, that's yeah. OK. That makes sense. And then for, you know, the gap report, it'll be the break in service time period. So be, the end date for that will be the day before they re enter the service. Okay. So what I, so the gap report, it wouldn't be the next SCOD date? No. The no. gap report is used to document the member's break in service. So the start date will be the day af after they separated from the service. The through date will be the day before they re enter the service. Like either they took the oath of office or uh, it will be found on their DD4. Okay, well, yeah. thank you. No problem. All right, we have a question from Alex. Uh, yeah, so you just mentioned just now that uh, the start date would be from the time when the evaluation closed, uh, when the members separated. Isn't it supposed to be from the date when that evaluation was initiated, from when they separated from active duty, not from the point of when they separated? Sorry, lawyer, um, would, would you kind of, yeah. So for the, for the gap, the one that's on the screen right now, that's that's only for the 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 time that's missing that he could that the member couldn't be rated. So if it at any time before that that the member can be rated, uh, we can do an 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 LOE or EPR or OPR for that time. Uh, but for this specific gap report, this is for the time that's lost basically. So if a member went into IRR or they weren't they weren't coming to drill or they just 
was getting out, getting prepared to get out, and they weren't rated at all, this would be for that reason. And then when they come back in, that's when you start the, the cycle again, where they're start being rated, where they have a EPR, OPR, or if it's past the time frame, uh, an LOE. So this is for the, this gap report specifically is for the time lost for a member. So just to, just to clarify, I know that we're not talking about you know other processes, but mm -hmm. uh, for the most part, if if there's a projection in mill PDS that has mm -hmm. a start date that was never closed out, that's what you're talking about based off of uh, utilizing this cap report. Now, if they're coming from another source of branch that there's no projection, then that would be that we would project an, e an evaluation versus utilizing this cap form. Correct. Okay, thank you, sir. No problem. Oh, Tech Sergeant Zeller, go ahead. All right, hi, sir. All right, so just piggybacking on the gap report, if I have a non participant IMA member, will I be utilizing the gap report for that specific evaluation period? Pay no, are they getting out? Non participating, so they're in the service. Um, for the time being, they're just not showing up for their IDTs, for ATs, their IMR red. Okay, so, this. so with that, they will actually have an evaluation, um, but you will rate them uh, applicable to their performance, I guess, because they're still in the service. It's their choice that they're not coming. Am I right? Yes, sir. Yep, so it, it'll still be an evaluation, like an EPR, but you'll just rate them as such. And if, they're, okay. if they can't sign, then of course you can take the precautions to a uh, member not available to sign or uh, if you're trying to do a referral, take those steps. Okay, perfect. Thank you. No problem. All right, let's see if anyone else has any other questions. Hello, good afternoon. All right, thank you. Uh, with regard to where it says any CSS MPS can sign section four and five can you please confirm i don't see any signature block in section four to be signed i see uh, it says comments impact on mission accomplishment is it meant to read for the rater an additional rater meaning section five and six no um normally whenever people process the air force 77 i can um sometimes members would like to input their own like they manually tap out their signature blocks in section four here to replicate what's found in section five. And they're basically just sign and date right in section four. So let me give you a visual. So let me just, yeah. So they'll just do like that and sign above. There you go, and there we go. Did that answer your question? Yes, and uh, thank you for that. So would that be a wet signature? It could be a wet signature. Question? Okay. It, it could be a wet signature or a digital signature or a mix of both due to the COVID guide, guidelines. We have a question from Scott. Uh, I'm preparing to deploy as a, a G series in, in terms of filling out LOEs on uh, member subordinates. Me, is that something I can fill and uh, send back with them in hard copy for their supervisors at home station to use, or, or does that need to be done by email? That's actually a great question. I just wrote this down. I'll get back to you on that one. I don't want to give you the wrong information. No, no worries. I just want to make sure I'm doing right by my people and getting it to who needs it for when they get raided after their deployment. Gotcha. All right, we'll get back to you as soon as possible with the correct answer. Thank you very much. Do we have a question from Staff Sergeant Casey Cowdery? Sorry, I was just wondering on the supplemental LOE one. For yes. the, do we have to put any mandatory comments in or are you stating like we have to go in the AFI to tell us which comments we have to put? There is no mandatory comments uh, for the supplemental LOE since the supplemental LOE is basically used, utilized to provide extra bullets that wasn't 
on the original e evaluation that you ran out of room and you would like to add more bullets, but there's not enough room on the original evaluation. So then you will uh, fill out a supplemental LOE to provide the extra bullets in section four. And okay. let me share and then my screen. It's the same for the um, formal LOE for like a deployed commander and G series orders. Do we have to like input anything on there? Or is that just like the actual like itself when like his deployed location inputs the comments there? Yeah, the, his deployed location will input, uh, will basically fill this out as a regular OPR. Okay. If, um, and that all depends on the supervision days. So if it's more than 365, then you will create a normal OPR for the deployed commander. If it's anything less, if the commander was deployed for anything less than 365 days and the minimum amount of days ha is 45 days, then you can submit this formal LOE. OK, thank you. No problem. But oh. uh, this is uh, Master Sergeant Gaona. Uh, the question that I have, you mentioned all these LOEs. Great. But the other problem, the other question is because ARPC, when you submit information like this, uh, you get two different answers. So my question is, on the true copy, do we still have to true copy these forms? When you say true copy, do you mean like the the PDF that's like showing now? Just like how you see right here, but on the left hand side, like it, it used to be, but it's just like you always get, because there might be some brand new airman that maybe doesn't know at ARPC, but you'll have somebody saying that you need to put the true copy on the left hand side oh right I, here. I, okay okay I, I understand no you don't have to we don't we don't you don't have to do that anymore if you do oh. it we'll still take it if you don't we still take it okay i just want to confirm that because uh i mean we've in the past i've had you know a 77 return back because it was in true copy oh yeah as of now since uh COVID is kind of lifting we're getting back to training and and making sure everybody's on the same page, but I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, you can turn it in either way, and we'll accept it either way as long as the form is correct. Okay, that's all I had, sir. All right, no problem. Thank you. Perfect, perfect. I just wanted to thank you guys for your time. Please don't forget, to, uh, if you have any questions, comments that weren't answered in today's meeting, please feel free to open uh, my Pierce ticket and um, that ticket will be answered within three to five business days. And please remember to review any updates to the AFI 36-2406. All right, Th again, thank you everybody. Please enjoy the rest of your day. All right, um, that concludes this month's virtual training. And I'll see you next month. <laughs>